Hello guys, so welcome back to our lectures. So in this, uh, you know, a part of chapter four, basically it's the final part. Uh, we're gonna study the multiplexers. It's another, you know, type of logic uh, circuits that do very interesting stuff. So uh, basically the multiplexer is a digital circuit that, you know, assign uh, one of the inputs to the output. It all, to always have one output, just one output but have multiple inputs, okay? And based on some other input called the selection input, some of, uh, one of the inputs, one of the inputs will go or be assigned to the output. So let's see an example to make it more clear for you. Here is a two by one multiplexer or MUX, okay? It has two inputs, I note and I1, and they have one selection input called it's, this is called selection. It's an input, but it has some purpose that, you know, uh, based on this selection, it's an input. Uh, one of the two main inputs, I note and I1, will be assigned to the output Y. So, so the truth table can be thought of like this. So uh, S is one bit, the so selection is one bit, so either zero or one, it can be only zero or one. So when S is zero, I note Y will be equal to I note. And when S is one, Y will be equal to I one. And the I note and the I one are just Boolean variables. They are also like S either zero or one. Okay. So what, so when, it, when, when S equal to zero, Y will be equal to the value of I note, whatever it is, zero or one. And when S is equal to one, Y will be equal to I1, whatever it is, zero or one. If it was zero, Y will be zero. If it was one, Y will be one, okay? And here is usually the, you know, the symbol for the multiplexer. It's usually, you know, take that, sh that shape in digital circuits. Whenever you have this shape, you know, you know that this is a multiplexer, okay? And we usually write the value of the selection Beside the input, that means when S is zero, uh, I note will be coupled to Y. When S is one, I one will be coupled to Y. Okay. So let's you know trace trace uh, this circuit, this digital circuit, and truly really, you know prove that this is what what will happen. So let's assume that S equal to zero. So if S equal to zero, you know this input for the AND gate will be zero. But this input will be one because there is an inverter here. So uh, the second input for this end is I1. The second input for this end is I0. I, what if you have an AND gate and one of the inputs, just one, if it has million inputs and just one of them is zero, then the output will be zero. And now uh, this AND gate has one input uh, equal to one. So basically uh, the output will be I note and the one which is basically I note. And here is, we have OR gate, OR gate will be just, you know, OR uh, it's two inputs together. So the output will be at that case, I note OR zero, which is basically I note. So Y really equal to I note when S equal to zero. Now let's try S equal to one. So I put one, I'm gonna put one here. Okay, one, so the input to this AND gate is one, and the output here will be zero, so the input here will be zero. Now it's the opposite case. So this AND gate now has one input I1, and the other input is one. So uh, I1 dot one, or I1 AND one, will be, give you I1. And the first AND gate now has two input, and one of them is zero. Zero dot I naught will give you zero. Now the output of the uh, OR gate will be I1 or zero, which is I1. So really, I, uh, Y equal to I1 when S equal to uh, one, okay? Here is another example with uh, now four to one max. This is four to one max, okay? Since it's a four to one, since you have four inputs, I zero, I one, I two, I three, you need uh, two bits for the selection. So whenever we have N inputs, 
the number of selection should be log to uh, to this number, whatever it is, you know. So let's call it two to the power of n. So this will be two to the power of n, which is basically uh, n. So here we have four inputs. That means two to the power of two. So log two to the power of two is basically two log two two. This is one, so equal to two. Okay. So basically, the inputs must be must be for any max for any max. The, the number of inputs must be uh, uh, power of two. And the number of selection is basically log uh, to the base of two to the number of inputs, whatever it is. So it will give you, you know, uh, basically exponent n here, which is two in that case. And that's obvious. Why? Because if you have, for example, four inputs, okay, to select one of them, we need we need two bits uh, to change from zero to three. If if these two bits are zero, 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 then for example, we're gonna get I zero. If it's zero one, we're gonna get I one. If it's one zero, we're gonna get I two. If it's one one, we get, we're gonna get I three. Again, when S one and S zero is zero, zero, Y will be I zero. When uh, S one, S zero is zero, one, Y will be equal to I one, whatever it is. If uh, S1, S0 is 1, 0, Y will be equal to I2, whatever it is. When S1, S0 is 1, 1, Y will be equal to I3, whatever it is. Okay? So let's also check on the circuit. Let's put 0, 0. So 0 here and 0 here. So if we put 0 here, this will be 1, so we will have here 1. If you put uh, 0 here, this will be 0. Now for S0, we're going to have 0 here and 1 here, okay? Yeah, and also 0 here because this is uh, a dot here and also here is a dot, so this will also be 0. And this will be 1 because we have a dot here, yes. Then we have here I0, we have here I1, we have here I2, we have here I3. Look. You will find that all the time, three and the gates will give zeros and the one will give I, whatever it is. So for example, this, this and gate in the, the last one has two inputs zero. So basically the output is zero. This has one input as zero, so the output will be zero. This again has one, one input as zero, so the output will be zero. Is this one now, uh, I missed that, there is one here, yes. This is zero, so this will be one, so we have one. So I note and one and one will give you I note. Then this or gate will be I naught or zero or zero or zero, which is basically I naught. So really, when S uh, zero, S one is equal to zero, zero, Y will be equal to I naught. And you can, of course, uh, you know, trace uh, other uh, cases as well, okay? That's basically for, you know, uh, the basic max. One important note here, just like the decoders and the encoders, we can add enable bits, enable input, I'm sorry, enable input. So let's do to the another color. That's that would be very easy. And again, when the input enable is zero, the output will be uh, zero, whatever the inputs and whatever the selection, okay? And when the enable is one, then the, you know, the, the function, the circuit will function, you know, normally. Okay, just like the multiplexer. So let's let's see how, how we're gonna add this. It's it's really easy. So just one, you know, one input to each end gate, which is basically the enable input. So we can make it semi here. So let's you know uh, try to remove some stuff. Here it is, just one input. Very easy. And now, when E is zero, then both AND gates has uh, input, which is zero. So basically, they will give zero, whatever I note and I one, and whatever the selection, of course. So Y will be zero. If uh, this input is one, 
then this will be one, this will be one, then with end gate, if, if one of the inputs of the end gate is one, then it doesn't, it does not have any relation to the out. I mean, then the, for example, the output here will be I naught, uh, S dash or S complement dot one, which is basically I naught S complement. And here will be I one, and the other input is S dot one, which is basically, you know, uh, so at the end it will be, it will be I one S, okay? Then based on the S and based on I naught, you're gonna get Y, okay? So it's basically the, the multiplexer is, is functioning uh, normally, okay? And also we can do that with, with four by one multiplexer as well. So let's remove the mess again. Let's make it with red this time. So again, it's just one input to all the AND gates. Whenever it's zero, then all the outputs, if it's zero, all the outputs will be zero. So Y will be zero as well. Okay. And for some times we need inverted logic E. I mean, here when E is zero, we disable the circuit. When E is one, we enable the circuit. This is normal logic. For inverted logic, or negative logic, just like what we see with the, with the multiplexer, it's the opposite. When E is zero, we enable the circuit, it's the opposite. When E is one, we disable the circuit. And that's really easy to implement as well. All what we need to do is to put inverter. So I'm gonna add inverter like this, so let's remove. Now, if you put E1 here, then the inverter will invert it to zero. So again, you have zero, 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 zero. So basically the outputs will be zero. So Y will be zero. So it's inverted logic. Now E is one, but the circuit is, is disabled. Okay, guys, that was basically the introduction for the multiplexer. We're gonna take a more interesting examples uh, or applications for the multiplexer in the next recording. Thank you very much for watching this video and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.